Roxanne Bernal. Morning, gentlemen. Good morning. All right, shorts are not appropriate for court. You understand? Yes, ma'am. All right, uh, probation, there's an application in this case. Court is calling 2023 CR 3937 State of Texas versus Roxana Bernal. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Hank Wilkins for the state, Your Honor. Defense. A little bit of waste for the defense, Judge. Are you Roxanne Bernal? Yes. Yeah. Defense, have you received all the discovery and did you review it with your client? I have, Your Honor, and I did, Your Honor. Court will find that the state is in compliance with discovery. Ms. Bernal, I'm showing you what's entitled application for deferred adjudication or community supervision. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Yes, ma'am. Showing you what's entitled true bill of indictment. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes. Counsel, do you waive the reading of the indictment? We do, Your Honor. State, are you proceeding on the indictment as presented? Yes, Your Honor. All right, I'm showing you what's entitled court admonishments. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand you're charged with the offense of possession less than one gram? That's a state jail felony. The range of punishment is anywhere from 180 days up to two years in the state jail facility and up to a $10,000 fine. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. If you have a plea bargain agreement, uh, the court does not have to follow your plea. If for any reason the court doesn't follow your plea and gives you more than you bargained for, the fact that you entered a plea will not be used against you and you will be allowed to withdraw your plea. Did you understand? Yes. Did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain silent? Yes. Did you understand by entering this agreement you were giving up those rights? Yes. And did you intend to give up those rights and enter into a plea in this case? Uh, did you understand if the court were to grant your application for deferred adjudication, if for any reason your deferred adjudication were revoked, the court could find you guilty and sentence you up to two years in the state jail facility and up to a $10,000 fine? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, has your client been able to provide you with any defenses? She has, Your Honor. Do you believe she has a rational as well as a factual understanding of the charges against her? She does, Your Honor. Do you believe she's currently competent and was legally sane at the time of the offense? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Bernal, has anyone threatened you, coerced you, or placed you in fear to get you to enter this plea? No. Has anyone promised you anything other than the plea? No. Are you satisfied with the way you've been represented? Yes. Are you a U.S. citizen? Yes, ma'am. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived a right to jury trial, showing you the plea bargain page. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. According to the plea, there's a $500 fine. State recommends community supervision. Did you understand that to be the plea? Yes. Defense? Yes, Your Honor. State? Yes, Your Honor. Showing you the waiver of appeal paragraph. Did you review that paragraph with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in both places? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand by signing that you're waiving your right to appeal? The only items that can be appealed are written pretrial motions that have been filed, heard, and ruled upon by the court. Did you understand? Yes. Counsel, have there been any such motions? No. Outside the agreement, the state is requesting that your deferred adjudication be for a term of two years. There be a TAP evaluation, 150 hours community service restitution, and the DOEP course. Did you understand those are recommendations from the state, and the court does not have to follow those recommendations? Yes. Then to the offenses charge, how do you plead guilty, not guilty, or no contest? Okay. State any evidence? Your Honor, I submit State's Exhibit 1 in the attachments. And no objections, Your Honor, for right. purposes of the plea. Thank you. Your excuse. Showing you what's entitled wavering consent to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, ma'am. Again, did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state were calling the right to remain silent? Yes. Did you understand that today the state will be presenting evidence in the form of witnesses' statements and police reports, but most importantly, there will be no live testimony. Did you understand? Yes. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived and consented to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Court will accept into evidence states exhibits one in attachments and review the same.
After reviewing state's exhibits one and attachments, the court will find there is sufficient evidence to find you guilty. The court will defer finding you guilty as you've applied for deferred adjudication. Are you proceeding with sentencing? Yes, Your Honor, we are. Anything you wish to say on behalf of your client? Just let the court follow the recommendation, Your Honor, hmm. and grant your deferred adjudication. All right. Do you have any children? What are their ages? Um, I just have a newborn. Um, he's four months, and then I have a five, a seven. Uh, 9, 11, and 13. So newborn, 5, 7, 9, 11, and 13? Yes, ma'am. Are you employed? Not at this moment. I'm looking forward. Uh, just one moment off the record. Uh, let them know, uh, because I realize how hot it is out there because it's hot in here. All right. Yes, thank you. All right, we're back on the record. Are you employed? No. Are your children living with you? I'm with my mom. Child protection services involved? Um, with my newborn. Not, my mom has the other. So does your mother have uh, custody of the 5, 7, 9, 11, and 13-year-old? Were your rights terminated? No, they weren't terminated. I just um, have partial custody. Was Child Protective Service involved in the 5, 7, 9, 11, yes. and 13 year old? When you're drug tested today, what are the results going to be? And you need to be honest with me because I'm trying to figure out if you can be helped or not on probation. Negative. All right. When's the last time you used drugs? February 6th. All right, we're going to do a drug test today. So, and this is just a side note. Why do you continue to have children knowing that you don't have custody of any of your children and that you have an issue? I'm not sure. All right. You're going to have to find out because this is where we're at. Um, in your life, you have all these children. You don't have custody of any of them. You're not employed, and you say you're living with your mom? No, I'm not living with you. Who are you living with? Um, I just live um, at a hotel. It's a hotel. How are you paying for that? Um, I do do site, like, um, when I go to labor ready and stuff like that, but nothing, nothing like, every day, no. All right, hotel to hotel is not going to be stable for your children. And Child Protective Services is not going to give you your children back if you're living from hotel to hotel. But if your decision is you have no plans to do what you need to do, then don't disrupt, disrupt your children's lives. Don't keep coming back in their life disappointing them. And now you know for sure how children are made and where they come from. So you're not ready to have children, you understand? And uh, did you receive a CPS plan from CPS? Yes. Who is your CPS attorney? I don't know. I, um, I'm just asking, these are things that you should know because that case should, other than this case, that case should be one of the most important cases in your life because it's involving your newborn. I have it, but it's on my phone. <laughs> okay. All right. Anything you want to add, counsel? No. Yeah. So this is what the court is going to do. The court is going to sentence you to three years deferred adjudication. If she completes what she needs to complete for CPS, of course, she can always come back and ask her uh, for yeah. early termination. But that's going to be three years deferred adjudication, a $500 fine. That will be probated. CPS compliance and probation, if you can look and see whether or not CPS has her in their treatment program, if they do not, we're going to do a referral to felony drug court because there was more than morphine in that vehicle. Referral to felony drug court, if felony drug court does not accept her, we're going to do a TAP evaluation, follow TAP recommendations. If TAP recommends inpatient treatment, we'll start with intensive outpatient treatment.
Is there a reason why you're not able to get employment? Just because I'm doing the classes and stuff that they asked me to. So um, I'm just following up with that. All right. How far did you go in school? I graduated. Okay. All right. Proof of employment within 30 days. There's to be no employment as a home health care provider or with minors. What do you want to do with the rest of your life, career-wise? Well, I was going to school in the county, but when I had um, my twins, one passed. Okay. I'm sorry to hear that. So what are your plans now? I want to go back to school. Okay. All right. 200 hours of community service restitution. I'm going to want parenting classes. And if CPS, which they should be giving her parenting classes, that can count. And if she completes the parenting classes, I'll waive uh, 40 hours of her community service restitution. And she's going to do trade school or either some higher level of education. If she completes that, the remaining hours will be waived. Regular reporting by Zoom or in person. There's to be regular uh, UAs. We'll do a UA today to see what's going on. 90 sober meetings in 90 days. Field visits. One time per month until further notice, no unsupervised contact with minors. If, probate, if CPS ends up allowing you to have unsupervised contact, then you can come back here in the court will consider changing that. But for now, there's not to be any unsupervised contact because I know CPS tells you where to have your visits and when. Probation, is there anything else you need? Is there anything else you need from the court? I'm going to show you what's entitled trial court certification of defendants rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Mm, yes. Yes. All right. Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement and because you waive your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Do you understand? Yes. All right, we can go off the record. Ms. Bernal, do not be that parent who only does well when CPS is in your life or, in the, or the court is in your life. If you have no intention and you know yourself better than I do, your attorney, or even better than your caseworkers of probation, if you have no intention of doing what needs to be done to have your children in your life on a permanent basis and be a permanent positive influence on them, you need to just let them go. You understand? All right, good luck to you. Thank you, Your Honor. Maybe excuse. Oh, uh, Ms. Bernal, is there anything else you need from the court? All right, good luck to you. Okay. Yes. Let's get the facts straight. She loves a verbal ashtray. Never blowing smoke when she gets pissed. She's quick to castrate. Love her on a good day. Love her on a bad day. Either way, she's here to stay, stay, stay. Call her holy, 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 holy.